Welcome to the all new Marvel Roundup, the Southgate Media Group Guide to the Marvel Comics of the Week. I am Phil Perch, joined by Charlie Esser. All right. So I guess I get to do the, do the owners this week. Start us off, correct? You got the heavy load, yep. <laughs> yep. All right. I will start with Nova number five. Mm. Uh, it begins with Sam at home waking up, his mom wakes him up for school. Uh, the last couple months, he's been doing good in school and doing good at everything because he, you know, his dad was back, or so we thought, but now things aren't looking so peachy. So, <laughs> grabs his helmet, goes to school, uh, forgot to do his homework. His friends are badgering him about, you know, where have you, where are you at all the time now on the weekends and stuff? And he's like, you know, he had to babysit his sister, and they're like, well, what about your, you know, your mom's working, but what about your dad? And he's like. He's like, no, nothing's going on. I'm fine. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, so then he goes to his locker and he gets approached by what looks like his dad dressed as a janitor. And he's he's like, you're just like, you're not my dad. Where's my dad? And uh, so they decide to meet out back behind the uh, the football stadium, you know, in their Nova uniforms. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Sam's like, I know, you know, who are you? And. The guy says, I'm a clone of your father. And he says, what? And he's like, who sent you? Shatari scientists created me from your father's DNA. Because I guess they want the uh, power of the helmets, especially Sam's. Because Sam's is like a, I guess now it's a one of a kind. All the other black helmets have been destroyed. Uh, But Sam's asking the clone, is my dad alive? And the clone says, I don't know that. Uh, but he says, but I spent months with you and your family. I liked it. Uh, He says, uh... He hasn't been in contact with the Shatari since then. Uh, he says, but next time they're not going to be so subtle when they send the next one. And Sam's like, the next what? And the clone says, the next me. Which is when two Shatari warriors show up. Oh, boy. Yep. So they're basically battling them and trashing the, sta <laughs> the stadium. And Sam said, let's go up. Let's keep this away from the school. But the Shatari still were going for the school. So they have to dive back down. Oh boy! Yeah, and it looks like some of Sam's friends might might be suspecting that he's Nova now. <laughs> Only a matter of time. Yeah, but uh, then but then uh, the Shatari caused the Novas the cra the crash back down through this into the school gym, and uh, a mysterious figure comes through and says, "Ouch." Because well, I guess they cloned Sam's dad because only the helmets only work for Sam and his dad. Uh, uh huh. So at the end, the myst uh, a, a mystery figure walks in and grabs the helmet off his uh, off the head of his cl his uh, dad's clone and uh, puts it on. Starts powering up, and Sam says, "Dad." And the figure says, huh, "You wish, but it look it must be another clone because the helmet's working for him." Mm, but it's a clone of Sam. I don't know. Well, looks like an adult, so it might be another oh. clone dad. So. Or maybe they just aged up Sam. <laughs> you know? They could with cloning. You never know. But uh, yeah, the whole thing about cloning—it's all pretty randomized. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a good issue. Thumbs up. Yay! And next, I will go to Uncanny Avengers number six. Oh boy! No, uh... <laughs> I did not pick this up because of the preview, as I had predicted last week. But um. Was I was I justified or was I was I was I judging it too harshly? Uh there's some good and not so good here, but uh well it start it starts off at the cellar, the maximum security penitentiary where uh the wrecker gets let out and uh they, they And do they give any explanation for why they're giving him back his uh his 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 uh at any point point in this book why he got his mystically enchanted source of his power magical crowbar back i don't know well the guard in the beginning says step forward and reclaim your personal belongings and he says i don't know why you're allowed to have the tool back yeah because i mean that is like the source of his power right i mean i yeah. guess maybe maybe it's just a I, see here's the thing like normally it's like let's say let's say i stab someone Mm -hmm. and eventually I get released from prison for that stabbing. They don't give me the knife back because that's still evidence. It's in an evidence locker somewhere in case we need it. You, you know, So even if you want to say, well, actually, his power is now internalized. It's no longer associated with the crowbar. Okay. 
But why give him a crowbar back? Paperwork error. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, clearly. But the guard. Oh, the gu- but- yeah, but the guard's like, we have a bet about how long it is before you're back here. Then 54 minutes later, uh, the wrecker's going. Uh, I guess he wants revenge. So he he he's, he crashes through the front of Avengers Mansion. But little does he know that uh, Dead Deadpool and Quicksilver, who who respond to the call, uh, explain a few pages later. I guess. Uh, I don't know. I'm guessing Tony Stark must have sold the mansion because now it's a uh, it's a theme hotel. Well, technically, Luke Cage would have sold the mansion because Tony Stark had already sold it to Luke Cage. I'm trying to remember, but at the end of that Avengers series, didn't did he sell it back? Did Luke Cage sell it back? I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know. Well, somebody That's sold it. Possible. It's a it's a theme hotel now because when the record breaks in, there's a uh, chubby guy dressed like uh, Hawkeye <laughs> standing there. Sure, that's not just Hawkeye. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, so we yes, love you, Hawkeye. Yeah. So, like six minutes later, somebody must have made a call when uh, <laughs> Quicksilver's talking about how humiliated hu- humiliated he is because uh, he's pulling Deadpool in a cart, and Deadpool's calling <laughs> it the dead sled. <laughs> well, he, Pete's carrying him on his back. Well, that's what he said. He goes, he goes. He's like, well, yeah, the dead sled sure beats being carried in your arms like a giant baby. <laughs> Uh, so they're talking about yeah they're taking a break from looking for the red skull to you know take care of the wrecker and uh quicksilver's asking deadpool he's like why do you care about the red skull using xavier's brain and deadpool says look i'm trying to live up to logan's legacy he's like by killing everyone he would if he was still possessed the gift of life <laughs> <laughs> he says pl- he goes plus whatever's wrong with my head makes it impossible for telepaths to put a whammy on me yay <laughs> So they go walk in. Uh, That'll come in handy in later issues. Uh, yep. So they're looking for the wrecker, and he basically crashes out of a room where I guess a couple couple was ready to get romantic. Uh, the husband's dressed as the Vision, and the, and the wife's dressed as the Wasp. They never dated. That makes no sense. No, uh, I age. <laughs> Because even even the wife's like, are you the real Deadpool? And he's like, if I were, would I be here at Avengers Fantasy Camp? <laughs> uh, and then uh, well, the record comes after them and Deadpool's like, wow, I, yeah, I wish Synapse were here to put you to sleep instead of you putting me to sleep. <laughs> and of course, the record's like, Synapse, who the hell is Synapse? So, of course, they flash to a coffee shop where Synapse is and uh the waitress asks her, are you, aren't you that new Avenger? And she says, no, sorry. And the waitress is like, are you sure you're not? And never, everyone, and all, all of a sudden, everyone's staring out the window, and everyone's like, who's that? What are, what are they here for? And Synapse says, they're here for me. And it's Medusa and a bunch of Inhumans. Mm-hmm. And she's asking Synapse to come with come with her to New Adelan, and uh, she's like, I don't know. And uh, Medusa's like, you know, just come and take a look. You know, you know, basically, you know, here hear the proposal and if you don't like it she's like I'll, I'll bring you back wherever you want to go uh you know, not for nothing new adeline is like across the street it's like in manhattan so it's not like it's this yeah you know, it's not like it's a because 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 miss marvel's commuting every day from jersey city so it's <laughs> not like it's a big in, in position for her to go hang out with medusa and the inhumans you know yeah just saying just saying. Well, I guess Synapse was even saying she's like, just because I got powers now doesn't mean I need a queen. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, I can see that. I, I can see that aspect of it, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So it's basically Medusa showing her around Adelan, and uh, I guess they're they're saying there's some people there that aren't inhumans, but uh, then Hellion shows up. You know, the mutant. Uh, I think he was uh, well, once upon a time he was one of Emma Frost uh, students, but uh, I guess his powers are out of control, so. Uh, they basically take him well, out. Yeah, Synapse helps take him down. Uh, and and then so after they take him down, Synapse asks Medusa, she's like, so how's having untended clouds of Terrigen floating around working out for everybody? Yeah. Black Bolt, kind of a jerk. Uh, and, uh, you know, Medusa's like, you know, the situation with the mutants is unfortunate. She's like, but if you know, let you know. Let's talk about it. She's like, if we had a dialogue back when your family first emerged, we might have prevented what your grandfather became. Uh, Ooh, that's a little close to the belt. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. And Synapse is like, well, maybe it's time to burn that Terrigen cloud from the atmosphere. And, uh, Medusa's is that like, like doable? I don't know. Well, Medusa's like, well, the myths are sacred to us. And, uh, she goes, what happens if your brother goes the same way your grandfather did? And, uh, basically, Synapse is like, I want to go now. So basically, Medusa has someone take her somewhere. They don't show where. <laughs> she lets her go, but, uh, <laughs> Can they just like collect the clouds in some sort of big plastic bag <laughs> or something? I mean, like, really, it's like a big cloud of mist. Can we like maybe work on getting it out of the atmosphere? Because apparently, it's still a cloud. It's not like it's just completely dispersed throughout the atmosphere, right? Or is it? Or is it completely dispersed? In which case, we've got to sort of suck it in somewhere. But I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, so so back at the back of the mansion, they're ta- they're uh fighting the wrecker and uh he's wrecker says all he wants is a quick back quick trip back to jail because his prison therapist told him he's not emotionally ready to be free (laughs) (laughs) okay which is when uh deadpool says stand back pietro i'm whipping out my most powerful weapon (laughs) moolah he whips some money at the wrecker he says i'm offering you a job wrecker it's cash off the books (laughs) he's like it's a simple gig we're looking for the red skull and his daughter's sin this is money as a retainer. If you hear anything, let me know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then the wrecker's like, well, don't let anybody know about this. This could ruin me. But, uh, and, uh, Quicksilver asked Deadpool, he's like, do you honestly think the Red Skull would lower himself to the wrecker's level in ineptitude? And, uh, Deadpool's like, no, but it might help him stay out of jail. Having a mission helps keep a man on the right path. Mm. Ah, there we go. Uh, and then I guess the uh, new owner of the mansion, you know, the owner of the hotel, he, he wants to know if everything's over. And Deadpool's like, yeah, we hit him with some pin particles. He sh- shrunk down and sleeping it off in my pouch here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, he, then he tells the guy, he's like, you know, we saved some lives. He's like, but the, that's our job. Beyond that, the uh, proper shipping and handling of the wrecker is going to cost you some serious cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets 10 grand from the guy and... uh Quicksilver's like, isn't that gross taking money from the guy? But he's like, but they, this guy's a vulture. I'll make an exception. And uh, and Deadpool says, anyhow, I'll reinvest it and we'll save some people that don't have checking accounts. Cash, grass, or sea bass. Nobody saved for free. Am I right? He's like, speaking of sea bass, <laughs> I'm hungry for sea bass. Want to grab a bite? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Quicksilver's about to take off for a date when Deadpool looks at a giant door with an Avengers logo on it and uh. Quicksilver's like the catacombs. He's like, we sealed that area off when they, uh, when we sold the mansion. And uh, Deadpool's like, yeah, just my imagination. And Quicksilver's like, okay, but he's like, let me be sure. He, uh, so he does a retina scan and it lets him in. And he runs in to check, <laughs> to check the, the catacombs. And Deadpool says, let's all see how fast you really are. Seal the vault on my authorization. And as the doors are <laughs> sliding shut, Deadpool, uh, Quicksilver comes flying out and he says, please. I've never let a door win a race yet. <laughs> uh, oh, and uh, Quicksilver's like, yeah, the lower levels, they're all, everything's clear. And Deadpool's like, oh, good. Glad Dr. Druid's ba- old bathrobes and Hawkeye's sky cycle were safe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the two-gun kid has uh, has Hawkeye's sky cycle, so. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But the last page reveals the catacombs aren't quite as clear as Quicksilver thought because once again, the Red Skull and Sin are there. I guess they're hiding out because that's the last place anyone would look for them. Once again, the Red Skull used Xavier's brain to make it look like it was all clear. Mm. But of course, Xavier's brain doesn't work on Deadpool. So Deadpool saw something, even though he started to be a jerk about it, which is kind of like, okay. (laughs) And like I was telling you, and I guess next, uh, next issue is, uh, the standoff crossover. Like I was telling you this week, I think it's next week already. So two issues in two yeah. weeks. Come on, Marvel. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, this was a good, this was good. I'll give it a thumbs up. Of course, yeah, Deadpool makes this book, which yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it looked like a funny, enjoyable book. I kind of, I kind of regretted when I cause I actually didn't even get to browse it. Cause I actually, you know, going through all the books, I'm like, I'm doing math mm-hmm. in my head and I, kind of run out at the comic book store and then like after the fact it's like, oh yeah kenny avengers eh. yeah. you know because i'm sure it would i'm sure it was a fun book uh but you know like yeah. i said that whole thing about here's your weapon back that you yeah. probably killed people with at some point enjoy 
yeah, you didn't re- miss anything vital. It's like if you have extra cash, pick it up. It's a fun read, but yeah, save your save your money for next week's issue. <laughs> it was part of. Oh yeah, up. yeah, not gonna be a late week next week. No. <laughs> okay. So is it my turn, or we got one more? No, I did two. So that you're. Oh, up. so my turn. So let's go. A fours. Okay, number three. Let's see here. Um, I enjoyed the book. You know, I still enjoy the book. Uh, actually, it's kind of um. So we open up. Uh, Allison Blair has hit the um the uh, antimatter with a broad spectrum. Um, they. You figure out what they need to do. They put out the Ghostbusters trap. They pull him in, but he overloads it, so he escapes. Uh, it's all, he's like ready to destroy us all now. Um, Singularity says to uh, Nico that, you know, you have to take the low jack off of me. He says, you know, She Hulk said that he's got a low jack on me. You have to make it so we can't track him. And so she casts her spell to de low jack singularity and then singularity disappears and then of course um uh antimatter can't find him uh the other characters are inside of singularity they're having a conversation they don't quite know what to do they're kind of annoyed to be keep on basically they have these two god beings either beating them up or just popping them around the globe without anyone's uh, authority Medusa and um, Medusa and Dazzler come to words. She Hulk tells everyone to shut up because she's the boss, which you know is sort of her sort of taking over. Um, Doctor Tempest Bell uh, tracks uh, Captain Marvel. They're able to communicate. She says, "Well, according to this, you're on the station." And then, of course, there's Singularity hugs Doctor Tempest Bell and says, "Friend Tempest." Uh, Singularity lets everybody out, but of course, antimatter is going across the globe looking for all the places they've been. Uh, Allison Blair is uh, annoyed at everybody. They're talking about blow- about creating this weapon that they have this weapon that will destroy antimatter. Several people are saying, "Well, let's blow it up." Uh, Shiok is saying, "No, blowing things up is the last resort." Uh, blah blah blah. Conversation. They point out that you know. If we destroy antimatter, there's a good chance it's going to destroy singularity too. So, like, okay, so we're not going to blow up antimatter. Let's try and talk to it. And they do this thing where they talk to it, and basically, antimatter is like, um, I'm a higher being, godlike. You are nothing to me, and I will do what I like because I want to understand the universe. And what better way to understand things than taking it apart? So, it comes to blows anyway, and then. Oh, one thing I got to say, it's kind of neat that they have like color coordinated like spacesuits on the um, Alpha Flight space station in everybody's size. Because, of course, She Hulk has purple, Nico has black. Um, uh, uh, you know, um, <laughs> uh, Captain Marvel didn't need one, and neither did uh, Medusa in this because they do a spell on her to make it so that she can fight in space and uh dazzler dazzler is actually i just think is 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 the same as nico so maybe it's not as weird but it was weird they just they happen to have a purple one for she hulk anyway basically uh antimatter realizes that um uh you know not all of the not all of you should be out here in space and basically attacks dazzler blows her up and um so she Hulk takes off antimatter's head, and meanwhile the doctors are working on Dazzler, and then Dazzler dies. I don't know how long this is going to last, but she's all dead and such. And everyone's like, you know, we should have killed antimatter when we had a chance, yada yada. And Singularity basically is feeling a lot of guilt and remorse about all this, and goes to the moon and calls out the blue area of the moon, because of course no one lives there anymore. And... um <laughs> Calls out antimatter and says, no one else will be killed because of you or me. And I am here to make sure of it. So they're going to have their final battle. Um, you know, it's a good book. Um, I want to know what happens next in A-Force 4. Um, 
I'll be disappointed if Singularity dies. I got to imagine that whatever happens with Singularity and Antimatter, it is some sort of merging between the two. Um, I certainly hope Alison Blair doesn't get all dead and such. I mean, for goodness sake, she was the consort of the Beyonder. She's got to come back. You know, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good book. Uh, a little heavy. Thumbs up, though. Cool. Cool. Uh, what's your next two? Uh, let's see. I will go next to uh, Spider-Man number two. Uh, this one is really close. It could. It was almost my pick of the week. Ugh, I'm still arguing it in my head. Uh, hmm. You know what? I'm gonna go. This is my pick of the week. It, I mean, it's Yay. a big thumbs up. It's yeah, it's my pick of the week. Uh, so let me tell you why it's so good. Uh, well, if you remember at the end of the last issue, after Miles put Blackheart down, uh, Peter mm-hmm. showed up and he's like, "What did you do?" And uh. He's still going, what did you do? And Miles is like, I didn't do this. And uh, there was a creature. A de- He's like, there was a demon. And uh, Peter's like, was was he was it, was it he red? And Miles is like, black. And Peter's like, good. Not the red one. Hate the red one. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the red one's son, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, Peter's telling Miles he should leave. And Miles is like, no, you, you, you know, we're going to help the Avengers. And Peter's like, no. He's like... You have a couple rips in your costume. We don't need somebody to recognize you. And uh, Miles is like, you told me I could be Spider-Man. And Peter's like, yeah, but. And they're like, but. And then they flash back to months ago. The two of them were fighting a giant robot. And uh, after they knock it out, they're talking. And uh, Peter's asking him, he says, so you're going to be running around as Spider-Man too? And Miles says, well, I did get bit by a spider. And Peter says, can't argue with that logic. Uh, And Miles is like, are you mad? And Peter says, no, no. He says, sure, it's annoying that your costume is colder than mine. <laughs> that, <laughs> it is said, cool. Yeah, and he says, just if you find out if you're a clone of me, keep it to yourself. <laughs> uh, so Miles is like, so I have your blessing? And Peter's like, absolutely, and swings off. And uh, Miles looks at the robot and he says, you heard him. He said it was cool and that my costume was colder. <laughs> uh, so back in the present, Miles is like, what you said, and... Uh, Peter's like, I don't know, can I change my mind? He's like, hey, at least you asked. He's like, Spider-Woman? Nope, never asked. She just did it. Just does whatever the hell she wants. And both of her costumes are cooler than mine, too. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. So then, uh, all of a sudden, well, Blackheart's back. <laughs> uh, he knocks Peter down. Uh, Miles is still holding Cap shield, so he starts whipping the shield at Blackheart. And, uh, and he's thinking, well, if one of my uh, venom blast put you on your butt maybe I'll try a few venom blasts at once so he hits him and Blackheart's like down but he's getting back up and he, you know I will destroy you all this stuff Mal starts punching him and hitting him with a uh, mailbox uh, Blackheart keeps saying I will return I will return but he finally passes out <laughs> which is when Mal thinks big, de- uh, big demon face plant wish I had a band so I could name it that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the New York, all the New Yorkers seem to love it. Uh, but then Sam Wilson and Tony Stark wake up, and uh, Sam's telling uh, he, he's all excited. Miles is all excited because Sam tells him nice job, and uh, St- uh, Tony's like demon, and not in a bottle this time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Doctor! And then he calls Doctor Strange. He says, "Hey, Doctor Strange, it's Tony Stark calling. Guess what? We have a demon called." Blackheart. He just tore Fifth Avenue and tried to, quote, take this world and burn it. He says, would you mind coming down here and banishing it for all time? I would, but I don't do that. <laughs> uh, so then a, co- a cop shows up and he's telling everybody to freeze, even the Avengers, and uh, they're all like, what? And, and uh, Tony says, I really don't think that's necessary, officer. I'm Tony Stark. Really? Really? It's me. He's like, it's very exciting for you. <laughs> uh, and then Peter walks over and he says... Uh, well, the well, the cop points his gun at Miles and he says, I don't know who this is. And Peter says, you know exactly who that is. He is. It's Spider-Man. He's like, and he just saved everyone's butt. Just show him a little respect, at least more than you show me. Uh, so then Peter's like, right before Miles leaves, Peter tells him, he's like, remember what I told you when we first met? And he said, and Miles says, baby powder in a private area will re- reduce costume chafing. And he says, and with great power. And Mal says, comes great responsibility. And Peter says, there must also come great responsibility. He's like, no one gets that right. 
<laughs> Which is actually the proper quote. Yeah, so so Mouse swings off and uh Peter says, I need a copyright lawyer and Tony says, Too late <laughs> And Sam says, I like him. <laughs> uh so uh Miles gets back to his room at school with Gank and you know, Gank says it's you know, it's all over the news and uh he's asking him, Was Iron Man cool? And he's like He's like in the other spider. He's like Spider Man. I mean the other one. So you're always cool. And uh, Miles is like, I touch. He's like, he's like, he's like, I hit a demon. I touched the demon, and the demon touched me. He's like, it's so gross. <laughs> he's like, I'll shower, but I will never be clean. Uh, and then Gank shows him. I guess uh, a teenage girl must have got footage because she's all over like YouTube and everything, and she's like flipping out because she's like, guys, guys, it's all exciting. She's like. She's like, it was five blocks from my apartment. She's like, look at this footage I got. And she zooms in and she's, because there, there was a rip or two in Mouse's mask. You know, doesn't really show anything except like, like the side of his cheek or something. Mm-hmm. But she's like, she's like, look, the new Spider-Man is brown. He's a kid of color. This is huge. She's like, is he Afri- African-American? Is he Indian? Hispanic? I don't know, but he's deaf color. So exciting. Yay. And, and Mouse is like, why does she care? And she keeps going on. She's like, I love this. We have an African-American Captain America. Thor is a lady. And now Spider-Man. This is nuts. The bestest, best way. And uh, Gank's all like, she cares and she's cute. She's like, she would totally go out with you. <laughs> and uh, she's like, guys, I'm so excited. She's like, now I will dance. Spider-Man represent. And Gank's like, this bothers you. He's like, why? And Miles is like, I don't know. Because who cares? And she's going, black Spider-Man. And he says, I don't want that. And Gang's like, want what? And Miles is like, the qualification. He's like, I don't want to be Black Spider Man. He's like, I want to be Spider Man. And uh, Gang's like, okay, poof, you're Spider Man. <laughs> and uh, Miles is like, first of all, I'm half Hispanic. And Gang's like, we'll go tell her. And he's like, I have to go shower. Uh, but then they show, you know, the new. There's a news footage all over it. And guess who's watching the news about? J. Uh, Jameson. No, the black cat. Uh oh. Yeah, she's so wonder if, but trouble. Wonder if she's gonna show up here, but uh, then Ma- then the last page shows Miles goes home, but uh, remember his dad's in on the secret, but his mom's not. So uh, but his grades mm-hmm. have been slipping, so his his dad's like, okay, he's like, I didn't let them in on your super secret, but uh, but you brought this next part on yourself. And Miles is like, what part? Well, his mom brought in reinforcements. His grandmother. Uh oh. <laughs> she said she's here to straighten him out. So. <laughs> Bum bum bum. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, pr- the uh, the last page where they show you you know the preview of the next issue's uh, cover. You might be interested because it's Mouse with Kamala. Oh, Kamala. Kamala. Yes. Well, I do love me my Kamala. So yeah. Well, I actually almost picked up that issue, but I was like, you know, uh, but you know what? It was a five dollar freaking uh, standoff issue. So yeah. you know, yeah. So like I said, this is a big thumbs up. I talked myself into it. This is my pick of the week, and I think with the amount mm-hmm. of detail I've went into, you all see why. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds like it was a great book. I think I would have really loved it. Um, oh yeah, I think you I know. would. Uh, you know, and let's not forget. I also had to have my marvelous DC review. Mm-hmm. You know, so let's see if we if we get a, um, a decidedly conscientious review from Lilith Hellfire. We shall see. We shall uh, see. All right. I will move on to my last book on my own, uh, Old Man Logan, number three. Yay! Uh, as we saw at the end of the last issue, he crawled in uh, Clint Barton's apartment window, but Clint wasn't there. It was Kate. Uh, so it opens up with Kate saying, okay, Wolverine, what's the deal? How would you get old and why are you bleeding out on my couch? <laughs> uh, and... He, he's like, isn't this, you know, Clint Barton's place? And she's like, my name's Kate Bishop, not other Hawkeye. And she's like, she's house sitting because Clint's on a mission. And she's like, she's like, why are you ancient looking? Why aren't you dead? Are you a zombie? <laughs> and he's like, no, you're not going to believe this. I'm from the future. And she goes, oh. And he goes, oh, that's it. She goes, dude, you realize some of the crazy stuff I've seen? She's like, besides, you X-Men are always time traveling. Everyone knows that. <laughs> this is. But, uh. Yeah, and then she's like, she sees the list on his wrist, and she's like, "What's with the list?" And he's like, "Grocery list." <laughs> hmm. Yeah, but uh, but then he tells her about you know the future he comes from, how the how the uh, villains took over, and you know the heroes were killed, and she's like, 
And those names, Mysterio, Black Butcher, Banner, she's like, he's like, I take them out and the future don't happen. And uh, she goes, why do you want Clint? And he says, he doesn't die. Some villain named Avalanche blinds him and he survives and ends up helping me. Uh, and mm. he says, forget it, my healing factor will kick in soon. But meanwhile, he passes out. <laughs> Which is when uh, we get our we get our flashback, because I guess he's dreaming. Uh, back, back in the day with his family, he was on the beach in the wasteland and... Uh, him and the kids are swimming and uh she's like and his daughter's like there's a monster underwater and he, so he dives under to see what it is and it's like the dead bodies of some of the heroes and uh so he comes back up and his wife's like what is it and he's like i knew the battle of atlantis took place around here he's like i should have known better than to come here to swim and uh his daughter's like asking are they dead and he's like yeah but they can't hurt you and he says no one can jd he's like not as long as i'm here and she's like you promise she's like i promise nothing's ever gonna hurt you no matter what Oh, well, that ends poorly. Oh, yeah. So, at which point he wakes up and he gets out of bed and Kate's like, you're alive? And he's like, eh, if you say so. And he says, how long was I out? And she says, about 33 hours. And he says, Healing Factory ain't what it used to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Running gag. Yep. Uh, so, they, so she goes, who's next? Mysterio? And he's like, yeah, we got a big score to settle. So, uh, Kate says she accessed Shield's database and she found his last known whereabouts. Uh, he says you're gonna help me just like that. Why? And she says, "Do you know? Do you have any how? Ah, do you have any idea how bored I've been? Clint's been away and I haven't had a mission in weeks. I just finished binge, binge watching Twin Peaks for the second time." <laughs> uh, so he keeps saying how he needs to work alone and uh, she's like, and she's like, blah blah, I'm grim and serious Wolverine. I had alone, blah blah. Except I'm even more grim and more serious because I'm like 90 years old now. Blah, blah. Let's cut to the part where my adorable precociousness and you reluctantly agree to team up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he grunts and she's like, fine. And uh, he's so, uh, so they're crossing some rooftops and she's like, so you're from the future. She's like, can you give me some spoilers or is that a big time travel? No, no. <laughs> and uh he goes okay he's like yeah here's a spoiler in about five minutes i'm going to kill you because you can't shut your mouth <laughs> and uh she's like har har no she's like i want to know things <laughs> and uh she goes who is female she's for too young for you logan she's too yeah. young for you back well, off I don't, he, I don't think he's interested <laughs> but uh She's like, who's she's like, who's female Thor? I've been dying to know. And he's like, who? And she's like, female Thor. Who is she? It's been driving me nuts. And he's like, there's a, there's a female Thor. And she's like, yeah, of course, for a while now. She's like, wait, there's not a, there wasn't a female Thor where you came from. And he says, no, I don't think so. But maybe I just doesn't matter. Probably just missed that costume. And he's like, I probably just missed that. Costumes are always changing. And she's like, uh, yeah, but that's kind of a big one to miss, Cramps. Uh, so, so uh. They get to the uh, looks like a closed electronics store, and uh, and she's like, "Wait a minute!" And he's like, "You know, I'm feeling fine. I'm going in." She's like, "Wait a minute!" She's like, "You don't remember female Thorn earlier? You said Avalanche blinded Clint." She's like, "But Avalanche is already dead." And he says, "Don't mean nothing. Like I said, costumes change. Maybe it's a different Avalanche." And she's like, "I know, I know, but you're probably right." She's like, "But what if this isn't your past?" She's like, maybe we should just take a minute and figure this out. And he's like, I had nothing but time. So he pops the claws and breaks in. And there's only two guys sitting there. And he's, of course, he freaks out. He's like, where's Mysterio? And they're like, she's like, we don't, he's like, the one guy's like, we don't know Mysterio. And so basically he takes out the one guy and then he, he's about to, uh, seriously interrogate the other guy. And, uh, Kate shoots an arrow to stop him. And she's like, that's, that's enough. She's like, you've gone too far. And he's like, uh, He's like, you know what I was going to come to here to do? He's like, if you don't have the stomach for it. And she's like, I thought we were going to beat up some bad guys, not slaughter them. Uh, but she she hits him with an arrow and he says, something you should know, healing factor works great against the arrows. <laughs> and he's like, nothing's going to stop me. And she, she hits him. I don't know. It looks like she was trying to break his nose, but she's like, uh, she basically distracts him enough for the guy to get away. And she's like, what are you going to do? Kill me. And she's like, we're trying to. He flipped out. He's like, I'm trying to save all of you. And she's like, don't you get it? We're all still alive. We can help you now. You're not alone anymore. And of course, he's like, I'm, I'll always be alone. But he leaves. He gets a whiff of something. So he starts climbing up a uh, fire escape, which is when he gets hit by a trash can lid, hits the ground. And uh, a figure pops out at the end and says, you need to stand down, soldier. And uh, who is it? Old man Cap. 
Yep, he said, stand down. That's an order. And I love this. The next issue blurb, guess what it is, Charlie? Old Man Cap and Old Man Logan or versus? Pretty close. Pretty close. It says next, Old Man Logan versus Old Man Rogers. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's getting pulled. <laughs> that's getting picked up next week, next month. I think I've been regretting not picking up this book. I, and I mm-hmm. kind of, it was a heavy debate. I, you know, you know. Sometimes with these books, I say I, I'm just not going to pick them up because I don't. Because if I browse them, I know I'm going to buy them. But mm-hmm. okay, and we knew this was going to happen. So okay, let's see what happens. Too much Marvel, uh, too much. But uh, too much. It, it was well, really good. Yeah. Thumbs, really good. Thumbs up. And like we said, like I said, next issue we're going to get that. Uh, Old man Logan versus old man Rogers before he gets de-aged, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't even remind me. Not hashtag not my cap. <laughs> <laughs> I'd prefer they bring back Protocide before they bring back him. Okay. <laughs> All right, now, so we're down to the... our books together. Yep. So yeah. uh, what do you want to do first? You want to do Deadpool 8? Yeah, let's do Deadpool 8. Um, I picked this up, and I, I originally wasn't going to. I dropped Deadpool after the big money grab last last month. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, what would you think of it? Uh, oh. No, that was last month. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I liked it. I, want, I wonder where they're going with this. You know, is he just going to slap around uh, Sabretooth for a couple issues before he's like, hey, wait a minute. He didn't kill my parents. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Uh, let me start off by saying I like that Ed sits back. That Ed sits apparently healed all up. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, which is great because um, for a guy without a healing, that's one thing I love about comic books is even if you don't have a healing factor, it only takes like an issue to get better. <laughs> just ask, just ask Coulson. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> well he had a, he had a healing factor there. He had some. He had some Captain Marvel juice in him. Um, so here's the here's the big question I have in this. So we have uh, what's his name, um, Madcap, mm-hmm. Mask Off, uh, chatting at Deadpool as he's wandering around. Deadpool says it's because I haven't slept in like you know 48 hours, so I'm hallucinating. I don't know, man. Do you think Madcap's back in his brain or? You think maybe there's just like a small part he he didn't completely exercise him from his brain. There's maybe a small part that can come out when you know, like he said, he he hasn't had sleep or he's stressed or yeah. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. You know, you know, Deadpool since he's been here, he's had a little, much less comic awareness. Mm-hmm. You know, he he dev- he's crazy, but he's much more in this. He seems much more bound in the universe. I don't know why, but um, you know, it's it it intrigues me. I don't know what to make of it, but it intrigues me anyway. So him and Madcap are having conversations as Madcap basically is not there, but is there for him uh, as Deadpool is trying to ignore Madcap, which is mm-hmm. kind of interesting. It's interest. It's it's interesting because it's sort of a reverse of their previous relationship. When he was in his mind, he was just one of the voices in his mind. Um, yeah, so like him and uh, Madcap are having the conversation. Madcap, maybe there or may not. And as I said, one of the things that's interesting is like, you know, back when Madcap was in his head, Madcap was just one of the voices. Now mm-hmm. that he knows Madcap is out of his head, and but he believes Madcap is not really there, it's just a hallucination, he is ignoring him. And it's just like, I'm ignoring you, leave me alone. Anyway, so he goes to find this guy who now owns a strip club, who was a guy who used to basically, you know, take him on these jobs for this other guy. Um, uh, I forget who the name of the guy was. Not Tolliver, but uh, but- that's just Butler. A, Butler, Butler, yes. Um well, what, they, remember- what, the, what, what they were also doing, I think they went into this in the last Deadpool series, is um, they were kind of organ harvesting him, too, with that, you know, and then wiping his memory. Like, you know, they would c- cut out, you, you know, if somebody needed, you know, they were selling, like, his kidneys and stuff because he would grow them back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then you got, like, a Deadpool cancerous kidney in your body. That doesn't yeah, seem useful. <laughs> it might have been for experimentation. I don't know. Yeah, I, well, I know they eventually like sewed together a whole new Deadpool. Don't mm-hmm. even know what happened to that Deadpool. 
Yeah, and then he like up and kills that poor guy in the in the thing. Um, throws him out of the ambulance. I'm guessing that kills him because he's still got the freaking sword stuck in him. Although it's, wait, that doesn't make any sense. There's no sword stuck in him when he comes out. I don't know. Okay. It yeah. fell out on. The, it fell out. <laughs> yeah, cool. Because you made the point about like not moving around too much because you'll rupture the arteries that took so much effort to uh, prevent from stabbing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so anyway, he's tracking down... Um, it, basically, I like this issue. It has a lot of neat flashbacks as he's... And you're never quite sure if you're at like the present or the past or where you are. Um, and you kind of see how he's been manipulated in classic Marvel Comics fashion. Um, you know, uh, and we, he tracks down, I like this, he tracks down, um, uh, Logan, he makes the point about how he had had this argument with, Lo- or not Logan, he tracks down Sabretooth, had, how he had this argument of, uh, with Logan about how the easiest way to kill him would be to chop off his head with the piano wire, and Ooh. then, um, chop his head in acid, uh, but of course that doesn't work and he's all upset because you know Logan, if Logan was alive right now he'd be all gloating at me and then he uh, takes out his sword to puts his head on, head, foot on Sabretooth's head to chop off his head says you killed my family which is not accurate um, and next issue something <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, I see they're in Pac-Man, and here comes uh, Sabretooth's giant head like Pac-Man to eat all the balls. Um, thumbs up on it. I enjoyed it. What do you think? Oh, yeah, thumbs up. I really enjoyed it, especially when he's talking to the Jarvis AI, and it's calling him Sir, and he's like, no, no, no. I told – what did I tell you to call me? And it was like dope-ass <laughs> Fresh Prince or something. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Okay. Um – Want to do Iron Man next? Yeah, I'm I'm not sure if Iron Man or Standoff is my pick of the week. Um, I did really enjoy Iron Man uh, because I like the way that MJ is being presented in it. Like I said, I'm still not I'm still not 100 behind their characterization on Tony. I mean, it is definitely the um, you know uh, RDJ Tony, Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll say this much. The art in this book is really one of my favorites. Um, there's such a movement to the way they're using the paneling. Like, um, like for example, you know, on the fourth page end, you have basically this, con- it's a two-page sp- spread mm-hmm. of a walk and talk. But, of course, the ceiling remains static. The right border and left border remain static. But you just have the two characters walking across with the word bubbles all throughout. I mean, it is just some visually stunning work. And I really like that. Um, I really like the way they're doing that. Very weird and kind of interesting is that as they're having this conversation, there's all these like holographic bubbles floating around them. And I'm guessing these are all, like, things going on in the Marvel Universe or in the time sh- I don't even know what they're all supposed to be. But they're all very interesting. And then we get to meet Friday, and Friday and MJ have a little moment. Those two are fun. I like that. I, I like the Friday-MJ conversations. Uh, and basically, they're like, we have to get to Tokyo. Do we know anyone in Tokyo? Said Peter Parker. And Tony actually makes a comment about, you know, uh, Peter Parker, he's doing my exact shtick completely, you know? It's like, Mm -hmm. yes, right down to Spider-Man being his bodyguard. Um, And then MJ has his super secret cell phone number. And of course, Peter says, oh, okay, wait, how did he get my cell phone number? Um, Cut to uh, Rhodey facing the cyber ninjas they take his armor and are all war machined up ready to destroy him meanwhile tony is flying to the rescue and then cut to the mit where we see apparently whoever hacked his armor is the is a young girl there i don't know if that's james rhodes's niece or not because you may recall James Rhodes' niece was all geniusy in the last uh, War Machine uh, storyline. So mm-hmm. my guess is that's James Rhodes' niece. And she's the one who hacked his armor. She's the one who put the armor online. 
Or maybe now she's just building her own armor off of the same plants. Not quite sure. But I do mention that like she's like twelve, which is which would be appropriate for um James Rhodes' niece. Although clearly whoever the artist is doesn't know how to draw twelve year old girls. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's always a problem. It's like when they try to draw like scrawny old Steve Rogers and they still make him look like, you know, big buff Rogers. It's like, no, he's old man scrawny Rogers, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, she's supposed to be, because they mentioned that she's like super underage and yet they kind of draw her maybe not so much underage, you know? Uh, It's hard being a comic book artist because, you know, you get so used to drawing people one way. And then it's like, oh, now let's do a body image differentiation. Oh, I don't know how to do those. But anyway, I uh, really love this book. It is my pick of the week. Um, I did love it. Big thumbs up. Um, I thought it was a thumbs up, too. But um, I don't know. I think my whole problem with I, I like Mary Jane's characterization, but I I just I, I'm t- I've just been so mad since they got rid of the marriage. And I, I, I just want her back with Peter. But uh yeah, it, it, well, I, I, there was. I mean, there are good scenes with Tony, and I mean, she could still be his assistant if she was married to Peter. I think that would be even funnier. But uh, yeah, well, but well, the, I mean, you can't completely rewrite that whole, you know, that whole mess of Brand New Day. It, it's not something you can fix easily. You yeah, know? not for another. I mean, it's. It, I'm not going to blame Mary Jane for that. You know, no. She's, She's a fictional character. She's stuck in the world they built for her, you know. I don't I, mean, I don't blame her. That's you know, no, I mean, no, it'd be great, you know, and, and just for nothing not for nothing. Everything about their history is the same. Cause according to the One More Day miniseries where they actually explain what happened, um yeah. you they know, still live together. She just basically they were all engaged and then she's like, no, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. So everything is as it is. It's just that they never got married. Um, not for nothing. That doesn't necessarily prevent them from having a kid. Oh, actually, not for nothing. That doesn't exempt. Doing a hand motion here where I'm covering my hand. I realize I'm covering the mic. So um, not for nothing. Mm-hmm. Them not being married doesn't mean they don't. They can't have a kid together, which means Mephisto's whole plan doesn't work out necessarily. Yeah. Especially if some dimension happening, uh, Mer- uh, Mayday Parker comes comes to six one six anyway. <sighs> Mephisto, you didn't plan ahead. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, you know, and granted, yeah, I mean, the loss of the marriage, it's hard. But it, but I guess from my perspective in this, when I'm reading this, that's all still there. You know, the marriage maybe not, but at least that whole hardcore Mary Jane and Peter Parker relationship is still there and mm. her understanding of Peter is still there. And so, cause you know, to me, and this is just how I am, you know, everyone always says, Oh, you know, Gwen station was really Peter's love. It's like, no, Mary Jane was his true love because Gwen Stacy was his love when he was some college kid. And before the relationship, if it even went anywhere, she died. Mary Jane was his adult relationship. She was the person who he had been up and down with and all through with. And honestly, to me, if you really want to be honest, their relationship is stronger because he, she doesn't wind up marrying him because it's like, look, I know this is important to you, but this is not who I want to be. I'm not your hanger on. I am Mary Jane and I'm my own person. And to me, I think that is a better place if they ever come back to it. If they ever come back to the Mary Jane Peter relationship, mm-hmm. that's why it's going to be that much stronger. And that's why I say Mary Jane, I think, is his real one true love. Much more than uh, Gwen Stacy uh, really ever was. Because Gwen Stacy, it's, it's like it's college age love, you know. Mm-hmm. I did not marry any of the girls I did it in college. Uh, mm-hmm. The girls I did it after are the, the well, the one girl I did it after is the one I married <laughs> long after college. But you know, because it's an, an adult relationship, is very diff- different. Now, some people meet the person they're going to be with the rest of their life in college. I just don't necessarily say that Gwen Stacy necessarily was Peter's uh, one true love, especially because, of course, um, as I think you know, I, I, I kind of went back and forth in this, but I don't think he ever actually did tell her that he was Spider-Man and Mary Jane was the one who knew, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, no, Mary Jane is his one true love and they'll get back. They'll have something in the future. 
And and not for nothing, she is not going to fall for Tony Stark. And Tony Stark oh, no. actually is, is other person. But, you know, it's and, and like she said, I call Pepper Hot Pots. I know all your tricks already. You are not you are not impressing me much because not for nothing. Peter was smarter than you, even though he did dumber things than you. You know. But yeah, just just the stories Pepper probably told her from the Superior Iron Man time. <laughs> he probably scared her. Uh, well, it didn't scare her off because she's because she's tougher than that. So yeah. that's why I liked it. I, you know, um, you know, this was not one of these weeks where there was a one strong pick of the week, but you know. Um, there I liked it. Contenders, yeah. Oh, there were, there were. I mean, like Deadpool was pretty good too. I mean, you know, I think, mm-hmm. I think everything was kind of in this spot where everything was good, probably even really good, but maybe a little. There wasn't enough differentiation where you, where you can say, "Oh, this was my pick of the week." You know? Yeah. For me, well, you know. Yeah. Let's get our, to our last book. This one was almost my pick of the week until Spider Man edged it out. Yeah. The, uh, well, this one was really good. I'll be honest with you. The thing that kind of hurts this one, and it doesn't—I mean, it's a minor nitpick. Is there's just so much going on, and it's mm-hmm. um, you know, a little data dumpy. But um, honestly, I I truly, truly enjoyed it. It was really great. I love. So it opens up with, of course, you know, the clandestine. Wait, 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 wait. Sh- I'm sorry. Of Avengers standoff, assault on Pleasant Hill Alpha number one. Yes. Say that three times fast. <laughs> Marvel, they do like their very elongated titles. Uh, <laughs> so we open up with uh, with uh, the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier Iliad, a group of uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. agents breaking into the central comm. You know, the guy can hack anything and he's going to break into this thing. And then what do they break into? NFL Sunday ticket, because they all have fantasy leagues. Uh, but of course, uh, then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bucky breaks in and you know that guy's like um hey can we pause for one second sure Sin and uh holds the um holds the hacker guy hostage uh and he says you know what did I do I told you know uh, Bucky says uh so about the, you said you can hack and do anything um and for like two seconds I thought this guy was the whisperer <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but he takes him to a place. He gets him all the data, and then Bucky starts blowing up shield bases. And then uh, Cap finds the napkin that let, gives him the clue as to where he has to go. Meanwhile, uh, Sam Wilson is fighting the Green Skull again. Uh, last time we saw the Green Skull, I can't remember if that was. I'm trying to remember when we last saw the Green Skull. I don't know if that was like that wasn't was that was that Sam Wilson's first outing or was that Cap's last outing before he lost his power? I can't quite remember. But Green Skull, uh, which is a fun little character. Mostly I love the Green Skull because of course the amalgam red skull was actually the Green Skull because it was Lex Luthor, the Green Skull. Mm-hmm. Um exposed to K load krypton- kryptonite. Uh, basically a little backstory on Sam as Cap and how people don't like him because he's all colored and whatnot. <sighs> well, they don't say it's because he's colored. They say it's because he has political views, but you know. Uh-huh. <clears throat> yeah, anyway. Uh, Maria Hill doesn't much like Cap either, just because Maria Hill, as we go into later, doesn't like superheroes in general. Anyway, so Cap and uh, Cap goes to Bev's diner where him and Bucky used to go when they were at Camp Lehigh. And they kind of uh, imply, you know, Bucky's the dog with all the ladies, but Cap is sitting in the corner playing with his napkin. When we all know, (laughs) quite frankly, Cap has had so many women. It even recently came up that there was another woman in in Europe that Cap was stooping around with. Oh yeah, um uh Blind Al. Blind Al mm-hmm. was a woman, was the nineteen forties black widow who Cap was stooping when he was over. So when he's in France he's with Peggy. When he's back in the States he's with Betsy. And when he goes over to do some Russian uh espionage, he's with Blind Al. So and in the Captain America White miniseries, he was with a French girl for two seconds there, too. 
yeah, well, the man gets around. He is the ultimate ideal perfect phys- physical human specimen. So you can't blame the ladies, but Cap, you should be better than that. Although, as, as it has been pointed out, he's like 19. He's like 19 <laughs> when this is all going down. He was a teenager who had just enlisted and went from being skinny Steve Rogers to big buff Steve Rogers. And all of a sudden, all these ladies want to touch his chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's our Stevie. Anyway, meanwhile, oh. back in the jungle. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, back at the ranch. Um uh, Falcon is um, tracking down the Whisperer, and of course, we find out who is the Whisperer, Phil. Uh, Rick uh, Jones. Rick Jones. Oh, you said it. No, no, want, want, want. No, and no, no. Okay. Uh, okay. And let me give you. This is like so threading the needle continuity wise. And of course there is retroactive continuity, but not as retroactive as you might think. So <clears throat> as he mentions in this, when he first got the Avengers together, it was with the internets. Um, what that is a reference to a few years ago, I want to say it was Bendis, but I'm not 100% certain that it was Bendis did the whole, Grand history, sort of the 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 time slide, mar- modern Marvel understanding of what the original origin of the Avengers was, and in that, now as kids may recall, the Rick Jones used to hang out with the Young Commandos, which was in the sixties a ham radio club, but now bringing it forward to the future is now a bunch of all nerdy hacker, nerdy computer kids. Now, you may say, well, wait, what's... Huh? Well, ham radio was very much the internet of the 60s. I mean, it was like, you know, not really the internet, but it was a way that if you were a nerdy little kid and you were kind of a tech head and you wanted to have something to do that would let you be social with people without actually having to meet other human beings... Much like the internet, you would get, you would build a ham radio and you would, you know, bounce uh, signals off of various ionospheric clouds and get your, get your conversations heard in China. And that was what the young commandos were. They updated that and they had them in the internet. And of course you have them in the internet and then they're going to be all Kung Fu hackers. And here's how they're threading the needle. And this is actually kind of brilliant because Rick Jones is part of this group, but he's not the brains of this group. But, of course, when he gets the abomination juice in him, he gets a mental... After he gets the cure, he gets this weird residual mental upgrade that lets him be all hackery. Uh, And, of course, he has all kinds of access codes from back being an Avenger and a Bucky and all this stuff. So, you know, it's not like this guy's not in, in... As they make the point, it's not like this guy hasn't been around. You know, Mm -hmm. and he's the guy you don't see. I mean, that's the real truth of it is he's the guy you don't see. And my one big disappointment in this is no one makes a comment about, man, you sure do look a lot like Bucky. (laughs) (laughs) You know, although they do kind of draw him very similar. If you look at there's a panel uh, of like Rick Jones talking to Sam Uh and then. They cut to Bucky talking to Cap, and it's like a little, like, one is, like, looking left, the other is looking right. But, man, you know, they do look a lot alike. (laughs) Which is, of course, the truth of Bucky, you know, is that Bucky and Rick Jones and, of course, uh, the clone um, uh, Jack Monroe before them. (laughs) Because, as, of course, my theory is, is that Rick Jones, Jack Monroe are all clones of the original Bucky and are placed by the arena club into the universe of the 616 to influence heroes. Because as Stanley will tell you, the most important character to duplicate if you're a Skrull is Aunt May, because suddenly you fake a heart attack and suddenly Spider-Man can't, can't, can't get involved in your heroics. Um, you ingratiate yourself as a sidekick, you can control the universe. And that, of course, is my grand uni- united theory of uh, uh, Bucky, Rick Jones, and Jack Monroe. Okay, moving right along. So, Give this man a job, Marvel. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> They're afraid of my power. 
<laughs> All right, Victor, keep going. Yeah, so let's get back to this. I'm the Professor Essa. Look, completely meaningless on a riff. Um, so, uh, Maria Hill and her gang, uh, of course, crash Bucky and Cap's party. And Cap's like, what? They followed me? And like, of course they followed you, Cap. Meanwhile, S.H.I.E.L.D. comes and tracks down the Whisperer. Um, Maria Hill basically says, okay, Cap, I'm going to show you what the big secret is. Meanwhile, uh, Sam and, and, uh, Rick are running and Sam, <laughs> Rick says, drop me. He says, well, no, not in the middle of the street, not from this high. That'll kill me. Just drop me on that roof there. Just trust me. I can dodge a shield, uh, a, a shield, uh, you know, I can lose a, sh- you know, I, I've been doing this around with says I'm the whisperer, but really to me, I read, I've been doing this a long time. I can drop a shield ta- tail, um, mm-hmm. which actually makes perfect sense. Um, meanwhile, so cap is there and we see some, you know, middle-aged dumpy people, uh, Midwestern-y looking folks. Um, I, it was one of the things I kind of s- thought was kind of interesting that everybody has a couple pounds on them. Everyone actually looks freaking human and normal um, in Pleasantville, mm-hmm. as opposed to being all, you know, super villainy ripped. Because, of course, that's what we're going to see is that the soda jerk is Crusher Krell. Which is interesting because they were like making a. It's interesting this time because when we were reading the Illuminati and they were talking about how they were shipping Crusher Quill off to the secret prison, and everyone's all weirded out about the secret prison. Um, and now we know what the secret, the secret prison is, and mm. we see Maria Hell saying, "You know, you're looking at it." Um, you know, uh, she makes a great point about that's uh, Willie, our groundskeeper, and she says, "Oh come on, groundskeeper Willie, seriously, that show is still on the air." Even you know, people say you don't get these references because you were trapped on ice, but frankly, I think you just—it's just because just you're some kind of a snob. <laughs> and then they bring her, they bring him to Co- to Kobik. Interesting note, uh, you'll see how Kobik looks. If you look at the cover of Thunderbolts, you see that Kobik winds up on the Thunderbolts. So, that's fun. Um, our Francine the Beyonder, um, our Francine from mm-hmm. Beyond, uh, she talks about how she's going to fix things and help things and points out that his star doesn't, that's not what stars look like. They're round, like a sun, and puts a little sun on Steve Rogers' chest. <laughs> Uh, and Selvig says, that's okay. Why don't you go back to your cartoons? And we see the monkey coming out of the cartoon. Uh, or sorry, the, the I thought, jungle boy. I thought, that, I thought that's where she was going to de-age him because you know that's how they're going to de-age him. Yeah, oh, well, doy, yes. <laughs> Uh, they tell the story of the cosmic cube, so they got all these pieces of cosmic cubes together, and then they form this one cosmic cube. Um, they're saying, but we don't understand because these are all parts of different cosmic cubes. How could they bond? Because they're all part of the beyond, and the beyond is singularity. The beyond is one with everything, and it's the only one that comes into our universe and it becomes differentiated. So, of course, all the pieces bound. Ah, uh, it's like they don't even read the comic books. Ah, <laughs> uh, where's Deadpool when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so Francine and is playing with uh, Jungle Boy uh, Mogway, uh, as and and you know you know Murray Hill makes the point. Yeah, you're gonna look at the kid and put a bullet in her head. What are you gonna do? What are you talking about? You know, destroy it, destroy it. It's not a thing to destroy anymore. It's actually a freaking sentient person. It's like you know. You know, of course, you didn't have to necessarily say, well, now let us make you send villains to the cornfield, which would be Cap's counter argument about maybe if we can't destroy it, maybe we shouldn't be exploiting it. There should be a line between exploit and uh, destroy. Maybe like let let this being come to who, be who it is. And again, I like how when we get the transformation, all the all, you know the dumpy waitress and and uh, the mailman become the trapster and the fixer and uh, Moonstone um, says, "I don't know why we fixed the trapster." Says, "Well, because we needed someone we who we could experiment on." <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Um, and uh, then, of course, the local crank comes in, who, as it turns out, was Nitro. Ah, Nitro, you always cause so many troubles, especially in Connecticut. Why do you let Nitro go to Connecticut? Uh, oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Remember what happened to Hartford? 
<sighs> anyway, so Nitro Connecticut blows up, claw releases everybody from their hypnotic state. We get to see Redeemer. Uh, is that that is Redeemer, right? Or is that somebody else that with the flamethrower armor? Yeah, maybe it's someone else. No, that's no, uh, that's, that's Scorcher. Scorcher, okay. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He first showed up in. Um, did you ever read Untold Tales of Spider Man? No. <laughs> it was a series back. It was a series back in the nineties. It was kind of interesting. Each well, each issue was only ninety nine cents, which was good. But uh, every issue like took place between like classic like Amazing Spider Man issues like. I'm trying to mm. remember, like the first issue, what might be, you know, Peter Parker might be saying, "Oh, I, you know, I'm sore from my battle with the Vulture," meaning Amazing Spider-Man Two. But then it would be like they'd have a thing where, like, "Oh, look, Otto Octavius is about to uh, unveil his new mechanical arms," you know, so yeah. you're kind of placing it between Amazing Spider-Man Two and Three. But uh, yeah, the Scorcher was like the first villain he fought in that, and oh, he was okay. original. He was originally a uh, pawn of uh, Norman Osborn. Okay, not for nothing. He looks like a guy who just has a suit. If you just have a suit, could you just not give him a suit? Uh, I'm just saying. Um, well, yeah, unless he got amped. Yeah, the power was in his suit. That's why. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> moving right along. Uh, other thing that's kind of weird here is you get, um, I think his name is Goom or Gom. He's actually on the Howling Commando, so I don't know why he's here. So, I mean, or unless that's a different gigantic alien mes- menace. But basically... And they, had, and they had Atlas. I'm like, why Atlas? I thought he I thought he actually uh, reformed. I thought he was a good guy now. Or did I miss something? Yeah, I don't know. Well, they had to get him back in here. Well, you know what? <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, here's what I'll say. Um... You know what? Uh, when they put the universe back together, they didn't oh. put pieces in the right place. There you go. Is that Scar? Or is that Mr. Dude. Hyde? Uh, behind Claw. I'm thinking it's Mr. Hyde. It looks like Mr. Hyde. Uh, I don't know. I um, think he's like, you know, like he's not green, so I don't think it's Scar. Well, he's kind of gray. Scar yeah. was kind of gray, grayish green, and uh, is that? I think that's the man thing. I don't even know why the man thing would be there. He's not even a villain. That's what I thought. I thought it was the man thing, but I think it was. Um, I've only seen him once or twice, but there was another creature called the Glob or something. Yeah. Anyway, bunch of villains all awakened, ready to cause trouble. Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> at a certain point it's like yeah we you know you're all here because you all got beaten the last time yes this was a stupid idea but now we're gonna just have to beat you up again because you know you're not that good of villains i mean i don't see a dr doom here i don't see a molecule man i don't see anyone who is particularly a worrisome villain uh, <laughs> moonstone <laughs> is the heavy hitter here that should tell mm-hmm. you everything you need to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and again, Zemo, it's like, okay, you're a human. <laughs> you know, I guess you're very smart. You know, I mean, how hard is it? How hard is it to like not open the doors in a cell? <laughs> you know, it's like there's a toilet. Yeah, exactly. Thing. Food's coming down the chute. You know, you you know, here's a book to read. I, I guess I they guess. maybe they they thought with Zemo kind of transformed and not remembering who he was, he couldn't influence others. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's all good. I mean, honest, well, actually, I shouldn't say that Moonstone's heavy 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 hitter. G- Gom's there, or Goom, or Grom, or you know mm-hmm. this, you know, classic Kirby monsters there. So you know, there is danger. Although, again, you know, do you really need to put monsters into Pleasant Hill? And turn them into dogs for some reason. <laughs> Does this really make sense? But but my my biggest thing that I like about this is, of course, um, Francine. And again, we get this idea of she wants to make people happy, wants to make people safe. 
you know, finding the thing in you that you, that is the redeemable thing. And it goes back into this idea that why I do think it's Francine is it's the heart's desire and trying to understand this idea of the heart's desire. There was a great um, discussion of Maria Hill in and her role in this in a uh, in CBR recently. Basically, it's how she really that she wants to live in a normal world. And she really hates that she lives in this superhero world because superheroes are inherently silly. You know, you wear silly costumes, you have silly names and you know, it's like, that's not, you know, that's not the way humans should be. Mm -hmm. Give me your real name, put on a proper pair of uh, clothing and um, we'll go from there. (laughs) Okay. Uh, but that's that's everything this week. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> expect the big week next week too, people. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> all right, all right, let's get out of here. Uh, send us send us your thoughts on everything you heard tonight, which was a lot. Uh, email us marvelroundup at gmail dot com on Facebook. <laughs> we're all new Marvel Roundup. Twitter is at marvel underscore roundup. And our new Instagram, which we share with uh, my other show, the uh, World's Finest, the DC Comics Review. Uh, Instagram is World's Finest Roundup. And if you want to talk any DC or Marvel, um, you can email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp, where I'm usually live tweeting most of the week. And Charlie? Oh, well, you can always tweet me uh, at Charlie Esser. That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle for quality. And, hey, write me at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. And just just tell me what you think. I'd love to hear. (laughs) He's begging people. All right, is that it? Can we get out of here? <laughs> Let's get out of here. Let us let us out of Pleasant Hill. <laughs> <laughs> There's no escape. Uh, uh, all right, everyone. Come back next week. Like we said, a lot more books. Uh, the standoff crossovers continue. And remember, be a Mary Jane, not a Moonstone. Good night. <laughs>